Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. Sound plays a more important role in human behavior and our decision-making than you may realize. In this podcast, I'll help you understand the art and science of sound so you can better influence others in business and your life. I'm your host, Jody Krangle. Let's delve a little deeper. Eighty, ninety percent of my clients have tried something before Mm -hmm. and it's not working or they've never tried it before and they have nothing. Why do you think it didn't work then? I mean, did they not use it enough? Did they not implement it in enough places? Did it just really not resonate with them and they just went with it because they'd spent so much money already? Like what what happened? <laughs> well, uh, HBO, for example, um, they they re-looked at their uh, HBO um, uh, com- composition, the brand anthem. Thank God for HBO, you know, so subtle. What a... I mean, the whole concept of HBO is brilliant. Um, they spent a lot of money and time and effort to figure out if they should change it, and the answer was no. <laughs> yeah. And, and bravo, I mean, bravo. Yes. Yeah. They didn't need to change it. Um, I, I guess I think maybe they were thinking that the television motif was maybe something that was going out of style or that people weren't really using a television anymore or that, you know, that might have been what they were thinking. But – at the same time, it's iconic. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think certain things should not be changed, mm-hmm. right? And they, they, there's just like zero reason to change them. And also, yeah. for example, when they're doing something in a visual, TV ads, whatever, YouTube, pick a place you see ads that are visual, or in audio, podcast, radio, digital, audio, cable audio, whatever you've got. Um, if you're doing something in the visual with sound like a music you really need to do it in the rate in the the audio market as well otherwise you're not taking advantage of that visual so even if the song is, is sucks and there is a lot of music out there that sucks uh you have to match it so <laughs> yes, i think a lot of i think a lot of marketers um are bored with the sounds and i think that when new cmos or new heads of marketing or uh, you know, just new people um, turn up in those ch- important chairs. I think they're, you know, often they do things like changing creative agencies or doing a brand refresh. Um, they need to put their stamp on something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, and um, when they do that, they, they you know, ruin um uh the if there is a jingle if there is audio they they don't get the full value of what that could be um mm-hmm. if they don't iterate on that music if they don't if they see the music of the tv commercial as being too important to touch which by the way was given no thought before production but right at the very end suddenly it becomes like oh no no we can't touch it you know what i mean like it's not part of strategy yeah. As a result, it's not important. It's forgotten. It's last. It's chosen by other people. That is the whole reason for this podcast. <laughs> uh, so thank you. <laughs> good. Does that mean I'm yeah. on the promo? Am I on the promo now? <laughs> you um, should be. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's a reason why I felt I needed to talk about this. And it's exactly what you just said, that often it's the last thing people think about and they just don't think it's important. Yeah. And, you know. And and from a production perspective, that really annoyed me uh, previously. Mm-hmm. Many my whole career, I've been at the end. I'm waiting for the client to sign off, and I, I could bitch and moan, but I'm not going to because that's okay. <laughs> I was taught a lot of skills by being last, because yes, when I was yeah. last, I wasn't given enough budget, I wasn't given enough time, you know, I wasn't given any resources really mm-hmm. at my disposal because I needed either time or money, and I had neither. Um, and I usually had great ideas coming at me as well, um, but they would often be touched by the by what what I would now consider an outdated way of advertising, which was very voiceover heavy. Uh, it was not story driven, and I gravitated towards the stories that were not voiceover driven, and um, I think that's. That, that that that's my approach now is to try and take clients away from 
their their voiceover driven creative sure and 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 move into to 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 audio worth listening to that is not noise it's a noisy world out there and so mm -hmm. we've taken that into you know um more and more you know steps away from podcasting um you know because podcasting uh is going to have double the amount of advertising in it in two years right maybe three so, yeah you know, and it's getting more and more saturated all the time more yeah. and more cluttered and so yeah. podcast hosts are doing more and more ads right because everyone wants a host read because it's the most effective way to advertise because you sure. have a natural connection however uh that's a lot of, that, that, that's a lot of load on those hosts so tell me about it <laughs> Right. Yeah. So what we it. what we started doing was creating uh, host produce ads, and so whoever the sponsor was, um, and I'll give you the BMW ad that we did with Mark Pesci in his show, The Next Billion Seconds. We just sure. wanted to make one good one. We didn't want to have to, you know. And so whenever they, uh, and so we instead of doing uh, just a traditional host read read ad, we went for a test drive um, to check out the car that they wanted us to promote. And we drive it for drop oh, drive it. And we drove it for real. And it was very fast and pretty amazing. And we did we just recorded in the car. And then we got the music that or the sound effects for the car that were um created by Hans Zimmer. And we stuck it underneath the ad. And every time we put the pedal to the metal, the Hans Zimmer sounds from the car kick in. And then I kind of use it as like this premium thing mm -hmm. vibe i made a lot of jokes which is not very premium <laughs> but it's educational and yeah. you know entertainment right like yeah. that's the point <laughs> and so i did my 80 percent, and then the client mm -hmm. were like it's it's great we love it but it's it's a bit too funny like it's it's a bit it's not 100 percent on brand i knocked out two jokes they went great perfect leave it don't touch bye and yeah. actually, um, the way we mix that always bothered me. So for no reason, uh, we remixed it on Monday. Um, and, <laughs> okay. And what was wrong with the mixing? Eh, it could have been better. Okay. Yeah. Just like your perfectionism kicking in. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it could have been better. Like, and I don't mean that from a perfectionism mm -hmm. perspective. I just mean as okay. an example on our website of something I did that's great. I wanted okay. to act like you would have thought it was fine good maybe but you know there's a point where it can't like it, it was to me it, it was still a bit noisy in the mix and therefore I see. in okay. the experience it wouldn't be as as well received to a person wearing the good headphones and to a person wearing the not good headphones it was actually sitting in the bass register a little bit too much so it may have been drowned okay. out when they're on the bus and so i just wanted to Make sure that we cater for the people with the good and the not so good headphones, which okay, I think is important. That makes sense. So, so, so our approach really going back to the question of, of, of how we work with a brand to find their sound. Um, everything I've just shared with you is part of the process. Um, you know, and, and so we don't think of podcasting specifically as, um, this, this is not to me, this is a chat cast. What we're doing, okay. right? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, which is sort of um, the second format of podcast that we start to talk to our clients about. Because everyone wants a podcast, everyone wants an ad, everyone wants a sound, right? So when we start to find out what's important to them, we start to build the audio content for their Spotify and Apple channels, wherever you get your content. Now, uh, sorry, wherever you get your audio, not your podcasts. The podcast, right? is an old term uh similar to tape if you will yeah right uh, or rushes or bins in the mm -hmm. in our uh, audio lexicon and a podcast is just a delivery mechanism uh you know through the apple pod ipod right um but it should not uh constrain us um, because I think my first, that little tiny iPod carried 256 songs or something. God, that was so many, mm -hmm. so many songs, so <laughs> yeah. many songs. 
I listen yeah, to 256 in an hour now. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and so we think, uh, uh, you know, a podcast can be anything. So we start with like a forecast, which is where a client um, wants to uh, pretend they have a podcast, but they don't have the time to create one from scratch or they just want to test the waters. So that's a forecast. And that, okay. that exists in video form predominantly. Uh, on LinkedIn channels. Oh, is that when someone like actually is like sitting there with headphones on talking yeah, like to this. nobody? Is that like? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is that? Let me tell that, you. Okay. Yeah, let me tell you a story about uh, whatever. Right. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. because I got the plan here and I got the thing and I got the, the I got the pretend. <laughs> Hang on. Now yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm ready for my. Podcast. It looks like you're talking to somebody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's, Fuga- yeah. it's the Fugazi cast. Um, <laughs> I think so, people are catching on to that one. <laughs> right, right, right. But that's a cheap and cheerful way for people to get get started, right? Sure. And so I think it's yeah. great. But, you know, it also, from our perspective, we also train people up on that as well. And we give them okay. uh, some education, um, some mic techniques, some... Uh, yeah, you know, some some direction, some, hang on, you just made a mistake. Uh, take a deep breath. Uh, all right, give me a three, two, and then go into it, you know, three, two. So uh, I'm back on the podcast with you. Thanks for joining. Um, you know, <laughs> yeah. That. Then we've got Storycast, um, which is a Storycast. I mean, it's stories. It could be reels. Like like an audio drama or what do you... Could, it's a story format. Whatever it is, it's a story format. Okay. It could be short. It could be long. It's specific. Um, mm-hmm. it, you know, there's a sales kit. We've got a Sonic sales kit, which is B two B content. Um, it, it, you know, think of it as the Sonic funnel worth of content. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we've got a uh, choose your own adventure, which could be the drama, the play, the. Um, I'm sure that's probably a copywritten term. There's the, the, then you can pick for whatever you want from the buffet of options that exist because there's so many formats that exist. Um, a client could just mm-hmm. go, we actually want to really make a uh, an audio sitcom, but um, we don't want to say like it's our audio sitcom, but we want to pay for it because it talks about the industry or it talks about the message or we think it should be out there, but we just want to sponsor it. Um, and so, you know, Basically, those are the five times. We think of that as YouTube or Instagram or LinkedIn for your ears um, and, and, and just able to be uh, easily embedded into websites. Um, and, and we don't really, we don't care about the video so much. We, we, we care that the video is captured well, but um, the making of the video is less of a priority for us as the audio. So sure. that al- that enables us to partner up with our clients in house agencies or media agencies or creative agencies or whoever. Um, then we create all the advertising, um, you know, audio advertising that that could be needed, um, and we show visually with the audio or with you know the audio version how the Sonic ID or the Sonic logos or how the, the audio assets we've created, the music tracks, the brand anthem, what, you, you know, the motifs, sound effects, how that all ties together. And once they've sort of gone through it once and they get it, then we're ready to go. And we can, yeah. then we can make whatever yeah. we talked about making earlier on. Um, but the Sonic style guide really is the, the starting point. Uh, which gives directions to anyone making a video and anyone making an internal video or a supplier video or customer or, or, or audio audio. Um, and now we're, we're talking to more and more people about communicating uh, internally and externally um, in, um, um, in in the audio because the people who they're trying to talk to are, are out and about or walking or standing up or on the bus or riding cars or driving, you know, um, you never know where they are. Gig yeah. economy stuff, or they uh, are in restaurants or in shops. So, so we're doing that, and then and then naturally, that's also, you know, we've created sonic experiences as well for clients, where um, we do we do the SX. In you know, okay. there's UX, SX there's you know, meaning... like employee employee experience, user experience, EX, UX. We do SX. Uh, and SX so, is sonic experience. Just... Oh, Sonic is very okay. <laughs> it's a bu- the- it's a bullshit term I'm trying to integrate into society. <laughs> okay, uh, clearly I didn't get it, but <laughs> that's not to say it doesn't work. 
Um, <laughs> you get it after hearing it a couple times. It's like a new song. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so speaking of that kind of thing, where do you think this is going in the future? Because, I mean, clearly it's evolving, even as we speak right now. Uh, things are changing. Mm. And the pandemic, I'm sure, changed a whole bunch of stuff that was going on then that, you know, has evolved or changed now. And it's still changing. Mm. So where do you see it all going? Well, we're going to hear a lot about AI voices and AI music. Of course, yeah. Right? And, and I think, you know, we should jump on that. However... Um, I think there's an issue for composers, musicians, um, and voiceover artists and actors and writers um, if uh, people aren't um, compensated for the work that they've done and there is a, and then you know to, to get those AI um, creative to where they are, uh, to get that AI creative to where it should be. Um, and um, they need to get a license fee, basically. They need to be, you know, they, they need to be paid for their work because we're taking them away from being able to work further or needing to even. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot going th on. There's with a lot that, going yes. on in there. Yeah, there's a lot that's going on with AI. Yeah. And, and I, I don't think it's really technically artificial intelligence at this point. It's kind of getting everything derivative. Do you know what I mean? Like it's taking stuff from what it yeah. already has and making new stuff yeah. <laughs> from what and, it's finding. <laughs> and I think a lot of, uh, and yeah, and I think a lot of people will go broke mm -hmm. um, in the creative industries if they're not looked after. And so I think for us, you know, making sure that we're up to date with the tech and we, we understand how to work and understand how, how to implement it um, so that we can do more is very important, but mm -hmm. also making sure that the people we work with are compensated um, for their work is very important. So, but but creatively, if people want to focus their um, attention on what they're creating um, to AI, I think they've got a big problem because they're going to end up being very bland and they're just going to sound the way that everyone's website kind of looks the same because, you know, they... You know, every fast made website looks the same because yeah. they're on Wix or they're on Squarespace or they have a WordPress template or they've gone to the cheap and cheerful person and they've just got the standard thing. I think, you know, they have to, they can start with that, but the jump, um, that, you know, they all need, everyone needs to have, um, something unique that sounds about them because if you don't, you will, people will misinterpret. Uh, the sounds and the music and attribute it to another brand um, or or worse, um, they won't remember it. it yeah. Won't be, it won't be distinctive. It won't be memorable. Uh, it won't be hummable. It won't be singable. And so I think what brands should be doing now is starting that process to find their their sound effects, their, I mean, if you think of Slack's, that knock shuffle sound that they've got, Mm -hmm. That's a that's Slack. It's one sound, uh, and I think brands who, you know, acknowledge they don't have a sound or they've never thought about it, um, and go to someone who does think about it. And it can't be a. I don't think that uh, it can't be. It can't be something that's done for a campaign. It's got to be something that goes. I know I might leave in three years or three weeks or three months or. 30 years, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's kind of like good government um, infrastructure building projects. Why sure, do we need, yeah. why do we need this train? Well, we're, we're building a suburb there in 20 years, so we should probably build the train there before we, you know, um, it, it's that it's part of sort of that sort of mentality. Um, and so I think that, you know, brands who have been around for a long time, who have something, uh, you start with that, start with the familiar, start with the something you liked and go from there. You don't have to sort of invent everything. Mm -hmm. But you also can. Yeah. And you need to be able to implement it after you've created it, too. I think part of the problem that I see with a lot of companies is that they'll get something done and then they won't do anything with it. <laughs> mm. And I think, you so know, if the it McDonald's... just sits there. <laughs> That's right. If it's just if it's just like you must use this, 
You must use this on every creative. It must be there in one way or another. Now it doesn't. Now then you get flexibility because if you create a style guide for it. Mm-hmm. You go here are the elements from within it, and you don't. You know then you get f- the freedom to change the creative because you've got a few elements up your sleeve, and like the I'm loving it. Um, but da 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 da. There's a whole bunch of music that goes before and after that if you want it. Mm-hmm. So figuring out. When to implement that is also uh, creative um, options rather than uh, restraints, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a fascinating process, and I love hearing about it. So it's really been, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a... Well, why do you think, why do you, why do you think, um, what's, you know, from all the sound experiences you hear mm-hmm. about, how, ha- um, how much? How many time? Like, how much uh, process do you hear? Uh, do I? I'm just. I'm just of, curious. Of the yeah. end result, you mean? Like, how much? Yeah, of, in the sonic grinding. Um, not a whole lot, honestly. I mean, the only reason that I know about the McDonald's process and how that all happened is is because it's 20 years old. <laughs> like, I mean, we don't hear about it unless it has some um, some past already. You know what I mean? We we don't really understand the process until it's already been going on for many, many years. Mm. I know, for instance, even with this podcast, I've had three different music intros and outros Mm -hmm. because originally when I was first starting, I didn't have money to pay an artist to make something new for me. I Mm. got it from a music free, uh, like a license free music directory. That was where I went because that's where people go. (laughs) And that's what I used for a long time. And then I had an element of that music that I really liked. There was a a guitar strum in the beginning that was kind of an earworm for me Mm -hmm. that I really liked. And it wasn't enough that it would be exactly like the particular piece of music, but getting someone to make something for me later, then I said, I like that that aspect of it. So let's just build something around that aspect that goes with the podcast. And so I had something that was made for me at the, I think it was the hundredth episode. And I went with that music for about 50 episodes. And then at 50 episodes, I had someone else sort of take that, that strummy earworm thing and make something new with it. (laughs) So it, I I've seen how this happens to Mm -hmm. many different uh, many different companies and and my own really, <laughs> and um, and it it just it evolves over time. Well, when you get to two hundred and fifty, uh, I'll do. I'll, I can do. We can do something for you. We'd love to do something for you. <laughs> I'm getting close, actually. All we right, three hundred. Uh, three hundred. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, I know. Yeah, we've uh, we've actually got. I think I'm programmed out to two hundred and fourteen. I think at this point. Cool. So well done, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been going on a while because What's... of excellent conversations like the one I've been having with you. <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. I want to know what's your, <laughs> do, what, what's what's the the Sonic brand that stands out for you? What's what's your number one? My number one. I'd be curious about your number one too. Uh, but um, mm, my number one. I mean, it's got to be Intel for me. <laughs> Like I, I grew up with Intel on every commercial that I ever watched, and I was a techie from early on. So, uh, so their brilliance in not getting their own commercials, but having their Sonic logo on, actually, I guess it would be an audio logo, <laughs> according to you. Mm-hmm. So yes, uh, th- having their audio logo on every commercial that their the people using their chip made mm-hmm. was brilliant. Because it was heard so many times. I mean, yeah. and, and how you, can and you, you beat that? <laughs> well, and they had the reinforcement of the sticker on the computer as yeah. well. Yes. So that's that was one of the rare examples, like McDonald's, where they didn't need to say the name. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, because, yeah, like you said, they just had that volume. But uh, my favorite one's EA Sports. EA Sports. It's in the game. Yeah, because yep. to me that's... You know, Sonic, um, it's, there is a visual, but there doesn't need to be. 
Uh, yeah. It's said by a commentator, you know it's a game, but the Pavlovian response that exists in the same way that da 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 at the drive through happens, it just made me yeah. want to play FIFA, which was my favourite game, which is the, sure. uh, um, fo- soccer, football, um, you know, says who they are, says what they're about, um, just so perfectly eloquent. Sure. The PlayStation no. one is kind of like that too, isn't it? Like y- you heard that. Yeah. Like, and the Apple thing. And <laughs> like, the, yeah. Like, PlayStation. I, I mean, yeah. there was a, for a long time, there was, it's a Sony. Um, there's, uh, there's plenty of examples. There's tons but, of them. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, I think that's the interesting thing is there are tons of them until you realize there aren't. There's actually not yeah. many of them at all. Yeah. But these are the ones that have taken time, right? Like they've, they've been around for a long time. So they um, they start to become part of the consciousness. (laughs) That that's right. They do. So they've all got that in uh, connection, connection with each other. Um, But I think also they just, they, they say it well, or they hum, hum it well, the ones that uh, exist. And I think that, you know, the, the brands that don't do it are missing out. And the brands that don't do it as soon as possible uh, are missing out because it's very difficult to be different and distinctive. And you kind of need both of them in this modern advertising world because everything's so fragmented. Um, people are not just sitting down at the TV at a certain time or listening to the radio together or, you know, it's a much more solo experience than it was when we were growing up. And I think lots of people aren't seeing the same stuff or hearing the same stuff. And so therefore it's very difficult uh, for, for brands to make an impact. Um, and so this just gives them cues, triggers, melodies that can live in people's brains, whether the media is being spent or not. Um, and, and, and have a, a very quick association when uh, people are uh, thinking about choosing a product um, and also because they're it's an intimate um, brands will get, get considered more often so when when they're heard so they probably have, can reduce the number of times that they have to be heard so it's it's uh it's quite quite valuable for those who like to play in the market very much so yeah mm-hmm. and uh, I'm I, I've been loving this conversation, but yeah, we're coming up on our, our end of time here. So I want to let uh, people know how they can get in touch with you and and uh, reach out if they need these services, because clearly they should. <laughs> so how can they get in touch with you? <laughs> well, they, they should they should go to where, where, you know, wherever they feel comfortable. But if they do want to come to us, uh, it's uh, ampel.com.au, Ample. Um, and they can okay. find us wherever Great. you listen to your podcasts. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Josh. This has been very enlightening, and I appreciate you coming on. <laughs> Jody, thank you very much. It's a privilege to thank you for inviting me. Thanks. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available in all the usual locations. Until next time. <laughs>